Right, hi guys and welcome back to another video on Bluebeam Review. Right, so for today we're going to be talking about navigation, okay, uh, profiles and also toolbars. Right, so for those who are uh, upgrading from uh, Review 2017 or older, you'll notice that the overall uh, UI or user interface of Bluebeam uh, has changed greatly. Right, so you may be faced uh, with the icons suddenly become much smaller. Right, so uh, here's a quick guide to just guide you through on uh, how do you move around the different uh, functions of Bluebeam. Right, so first let's start off with two bars. Right, so when you start off uh, with some of your buttons, right, you will notice that uh, there are certain two bars at the top. Right, so two bars first can be found under your tools at the top here, and when you click on two bars, and then you will have a, a, a list of the different default two bars which are given to you. Right, so before we talk about that, uh, there are a few different default ones called the status and navigation bar. Right, so the status bar actually is a bar over here at the bottom. So you notice when I turn it off, it will disappear. And when I turn it on again, it will appear again. The same goes for the navigation bar, right, and also for the properties toolbar. Right, so just take note, these three uh, toolbars are generally considered to be standard and you should be using them. Right, as for the rest of them, uh, you will have things like your advanced to buy, alignment, appearance, control point. So you notice as I start to turn on more of them, right, my top bar over here will start to get very, very populated. Right, so uh, from a practical uh, perspective, you do not need to actually turn on all the toolbars at one time. Okay, you also have the option of actually pulling some of the toolbars to your left hand side and your right hand side. So how to move them? You actually have this icon over here. If you see there's a vertical dotted line. When I hover my mouse over, the icon actually changes. So you can actually left click and drag and you, you can actually move it to move it to a lower level. You can move it to the right and attach it on your right hand side. So it's actually uh, flexible. You can move it around uh, as and when you want. Now let's talk about the different uh, manners uh, of the different types of toolbars. Right, so over, over here at your different types of toolbars, you have an option of customizing your toolbars. Right, so if you go to this button here called Customize, okay, you're able to see three different uh, windows. Right, you have your left hand side, you have your top right, and your bottom right. Now, on your left hand side, you will have uh, the different categories. Right, so let's say, for example, if I go to the Document Management category, this will show you all of the functions which are available in Bluebeam under the category of document management. Right? It does not correspond to a particular toolbar, but it will show you all of the available functions. Now on your top right, uh, they will show you all the list of the different toolbars which are available in Bluebeam. Right? So from here, you are able to actually click on the plus icon. You can create your own toolbar, which starts off as blank. Right? And afterwards, you can also have your own customization of the actual functions that you want to create. So for example, if I were to create a toolbar right now, so let's say I, I just type in here, customized toolbar. Right, you will notice that first and foremost, it will be blank because there are no features inside my toolbar at the moment. So if I were to transfer some of the, uh, some of the functions over, so if I say I want to transfer let's say for document, I want to transfer things like create bookmarks, I go press this button and transfer over, page labels, crop pages. Now you have the option of adding separators as well, or you can create a blank space also before you continue adding uh, other functions. Right? You have the options of adding different functions from different toolbars as well. Right? So I can also, for example, I can add in uh, different um, different functions from other uh, other categories. So let's say, for example, markup. I want something from camera, something from cloud, and cloud plus as well, right? So you can customize it as you wish. And when you click OK, you notice that my toolbar will appear at the top over here, where I have my separator and I have my blank space over here, right? So those toolbars really uh, it really depends on yourself. What kind of functions do you actually need uh, for what sort of workflow, right? So you may be wondering uh, if I were to actually move uh, to another PC, right? How do I save all these uh, default settings, right? So 
the default settings are actually saved under what you call a profile. Right, so if you go to the top left hand corner, the review button, under the profiles, you will see a list of the different profiles which are available to you. Right, uh, some of them are default, meaning they have uh, some preset functionality. Right, so what we're going to do now, you can actually create your own profile. So I'm going to click on manage profile. Right, so the trick to creating uh, a profile and customizing it, right, is you is to take note of what is your active profile. So my active profile is my own profile here called AAPF, right? So how the system works is when you create a new profile, they will actually make a copy of your existing active profile, right? So if you're actually trying to uh, decrease certain items uh, from, from your existing profile, it will be good to have it active first when you click on the add profile button. So my active profile is this profile, which is the correct one. I'll click on add. Right, so let's say for example, I will type in customized profile. Now notice when I click OK, my screen will flash in one shot. All right, so when it flashes, this means that Bluebeam is taking a snapshot of all the features. Right, it's making a copy. Right, so once you press OK, this will be your active profile, which you can check over here when you click on review under profiles. You will see that my active profile is the customized profile. Right, so from here you can choose to uh, change your, uh, you can choose to turn off certain profiles that you do not need to use. Um, I can turn off digital signature, turn off font. Yeah, you can customize it as you wish and you can save it uh, for future use as well. Right, another thing that affects uh, your, your navigational process is also on your left hand side, you have the bars over here. Okay, so all these corresponds to various different uh, aspects and functions. Right, for those using the default function, you will notice that you do not have any, any function on your right hand side. Okay, you do not have any function on the right hand side and uh, what that means is that uh, it usually is empty. Okay, so you will notice from time to time that there will be certain features that require some to be shown on the left, some to be shown on the right for you to have maximum uh, efficiency with your work processes. So how do you transfer them from side to side? So let's say, for example, if I want the studio function to be transferred over to the right, so something simple you can do is that you can just click, uh, right click on it, attach, and to right, and you will see it will transfer over to your right. So you can actually choose to transfer some on the left, some on the right, for you to maximize uh, your screen safe, uh, sc uh, screen sa uh, space, sorry, and also uh, for the functionality purposes, right? And uh, last for the for the last thing. Right, which is one of the newer features uh, in Bluebeam. For those of you moving uh, over and you have a background in like Revit, uh, AutoCAD, or those drafting softwares, you'll be very used to uh, pressing L for line and pressing A for arc. Right, those are keyboard shortcuts. So uh, keyboard shortcuts has come to Bluebeam. It's a relatively new feature. So instead of uh, clicking, so let's say for example, if you want to uh, mark up a certain thing, right, these are certain uh, shortcut keys that you can click on, they are by default, right? Uh, for measurement, it's a little bit tougher. You have to press three buttons uh, to start a particular measurement, right? So if you are not uh, really used to clicking on this uh, this method, uh, or you are not comfortable clicking on the toolbar itself, you always have the option now to actually change the keyboard shortcuts over here, right? So from here, you are able to show you the entire list of all the functions that already have an existing keyboard shortcut, right? You can click on them, you can change uh, the keyboard shortcut as and when you want, right? If there is an existing uh, function or existing uh, shortcut key attached already, they will inform you and you are unable to actually change it, right? So uh, this is a quick overview of the different uh, navigational functionalities that you have. You have your profiles, you have your toolbars, and you have your keyboard shortcuts. Thank you. And uh, if there's any questions, feel free to let us know uh, either on my page or on my LinkedIn profile. Right? Thank you. See you again.